Hello, everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on True Story FM. I'm Pete Wright, and I'm here with Nikki Kinzer. Hello, everyone. Oh, Hello, Pete Nikki. Wright. It's a good day. It's a good day. The sun great is day. shining. Uh, the birds are singing. The colors are brighter in the world today. And we're talking about a fidget and more. But we're mostly talking about a fidget. And I have to tell you, <laughs> this is a fidget that is on my stocking stuffer list for everyone this year. I am totally, I am i don't know. I, I hope it's as good as our guest today promises. Uh, because... My goodness, I want it in every pocket of every jacket that I own. Uh, I'm really excited to talk about that. But more than that, I'm excited to talk about community and ADHD community, what it means to find a community, sometimes how hard it is to find a community. Uh, and so we're going to talk about all of that stuff this week. Uh, and, and I'm excited about it. Are you excited about it? You good? You feeling good? Your Kung Fu is I strong? Am. I am. All right. It's strong, stronger than ever. <laughs> okay, well, then let's dig in. Before we <laughs> dig in, head over to TakeControlADHD.com to get to know us a little bit better. You can listen to the show right there on the website or subscribe to the mailing list each week. We will send you a brand new little missive from us to you saying, hey, here's an episode. You can really connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, or Pinterest at Take Control ADHD. And if you want to jump in and interact, head over to our Discord community. Super easy to jump into the general community chat channels. Just visit TakeControlADHD.com slash Discord, and you will be whisked over to our invitation and login screen. But if you're looking for a little bit more, uh, particularly if this show has ever touched you, if you like the guests that we have, if you like the kinds of series that we're doing right now, head over to Patreon.com slash The ADHD Podcast. Patreon is listener-supported podcasting you support the show directly through patreon all of those funds the few bucks a month from you gets put in a big bucket and put directly toward us making a great show and growing the show and do giving new features and trying new stuff and spending more time producing the thing so uh, if it matters to you if this show has a, a place in your adhd heart please consider supporting it at patreon.com slash the adhd podcast nikki we have some news we do as this do. show goes live to the world. It is October yes. 5th. Oh. What? It's, it's, it's ADHD, ADHD Awareness, awareness Month. Do <laughs> the Bubuzellas. Nikki, this is fantastic. That's news if I've ever heard it. Well, because we celebrate ADHD awareness all, all the, time. the time. Good Lord. Am I ever not aware <laughs> so of my ADHD? But I know. I know, right? Uh, but yeah, it is. So we have some special shows coming up this week. We or this do. Month, We're doing a right? lot of stuff. Uh, we've we're, we've got a page over on the website. Uh, and if you visit uh, takecontroladhd.com slash, what do you want to call it? How about Awareness 23? How about that? That's good. I yeah. like it. Take control ADHD.com slash awareness 23. Head right over there and you'll see all of the, the, the litany, the, the, all the stuff that we're doing this. We've got stuff that we're doing in Discord. We've got special shows. We've got special, uh, uh, we've got all kinds of special shows. We've got special guests uh, and, and special formats that we've never tried. And frankly, I'm a little bit nervous about. Uh, so it's going to be a lot of fun. ADHD Awareness Month, uh, October at Take Control ADHD. So uh, head over to the site. Link is in the show notes and learn more there. Cody Lukens is a lifelong entrepreneur filing his first LLC at 15. Come on, showing us all up. He's a creator building tools for (laughs) neurodivergent brains and lending his voice to the ADHD communities on TikTok and Instagram on ADHD, autism, anxiety, and more. And he's behind Stim Mags, a magnetic fidget toy that he funded on Kickstarter and has since sold over 10,000 units. Once you see it, you'll get why. Cody Lukens, welcome to the ADHD podcast. I'm so happy to be here. This is my first podcast in months, so I might be a little rusty. I had to run around before this and put blankets on the floor to <laughs> dull the echo, but you know, we're here. It's 9 a.m. on a Friday. Let's do it. We're doing great. We're doing great so far. Look, (laughs) tell us a little bit about your uh, relationship with ADHD. Yeah, so let's see here. I I had a a list of anecdotes that I had written down a while ago when I was doing more podcasts. These are things that were answers to questions that I'd be asked frequently, and I didn't want to forget the answers because I'm very forgetful. But I've since forgotten where I put the list. So (laughs) 
I will do my Which best to remember an that the story is of consistent itself, across right? <laughs> appearances. Uh, going back to elementary school on my little, uh, not book reports, I guess, they're grade reports, report, report cards. cards. Those are, reports, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it would mm -hmm. always say at the top, should be evaluated for ADHD or maybe should be evaluated for ADHD. I, it was always borderline where they didn't actually take steps to say, hey, he should be evaluated for ADHD. He needs to be evaluated. He's causing disruptions in class. I would always go through these little cycles where I'd be a bit more disruptive, a bit more distractible. And then for some reason, I'd really just rein it in at the last minute without knowing that I was sort of on the cusp of being sent to a psychiatrist to be evaluated and very and subsequently very quickly diagnosed, I'm sure. Uh, but then when I was, I think, 20, uh, this was during the pandemic. I was struggling with a lot of depression, anxiety, et cetera, along with a lot of the rest of the population, and I actually went to a psychiatrist for those issues. And um, he essentially came to the conclusion that likely those were the those were caused by untreated, undiagnosed ADHD, or not caused, perhaps very strongly influenced by, and that when mm -hmm. we treated the ADHD, the other issues would subside. And he was very correct in that. I, you know, of course, still struggle with depressive bouts uh, and anxiety, as they're very frequently comorbid with ADHD anyways. But by addressing that root cause, it really made a world of difference in my daily functioning. How does your ADHD influence your, your drive to be an entrepreneur? I would say that it very much ties into the in-cup motivators of ADHD. I'm not sure if that's something that you've talked about in your show before, but that's something that I would talk about all the time on social media. Uh, it stands for interest, novelty, challenge, urgency, and passion, essentially being the main motivators for ADHD brains. And entrepreneurship ties into that incredibly well. Um, every day I'm doing something new, even if I'm working on the same few projects, I'm still involved in different things every day. For example, yesterday, I worked on uh, some motion graphics in Blender, which is a 3D rendering platform. I updated our Shopify website with some of the new colors that we're releasing in a few days, which by the time this is out, the colors will already be out. It's our fall collection, very exciting. And uh, mm -hmm. it's a constant stream of novelty, challenge, urgency, <laughs> and just all, all of the income motivators um, every single day because I'm doing different things all the time. And if I ever get bored with something that I'm doing or if I'm not feeling it that day, there are a million other things for me to do because there's always so much to do. Our company is very small. I like to think that we're punching above our weight a little bit. Um, there's me and there's one other full-time employee. There's a few part-time employees and then you know a network of contractors for super specific things that we're not capable of doing. But we're trying to act in a way, or we're trying to, I guess, put ourselves forth as if we're substantially larger than we are, provide the best customer service, provide the best customer experience, um, have the best website. It's sometimes I, I feel like I, I bit off a bit more than I can chew, but I also feel like if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't be where I am now because I wouldn't be, there wouldn't be that constant sense of like, Oh, if I don't do this, everything's going to go wrong. Um, and I, I think that that ends up being pretty helpful in the end, but it's, it's also a bit of a blessing and a curse. I, for example, I worked for, I think, 12 hours yesterday, just sort of like flew by. I was just really excited about the stuff I was doing, looked down and realized, oh, shoot, like, I don't think I've eaten anything in a solid yeah. nine hours. Yeah, right. And I'm getting right. a headache. Mm -hmm. That's something that I don't think I would be able to do without my ADHD. So I don't view it necessarily as a superpower, but just sort of as it just it just is what it is. Yeah, um, yeah. And it influences my life in pretty much every aspect of my life, but I don't think it necessarily is is a superpower like some people might might say. And I, I don't know your personal stances on that. I should have listened to more. No, no, of the no. We're anti. On. We're anti superpower. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Recognizing the the, 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 the the power that it can have, we are anti superpower. What is so interesting about your story, Cody, too, is it shows like the interest you are, the interest you have in your work, right? Um. I worked 10 hours yesterday and I thought about it. It's funny we're having this conversation because yesterday when I was thinking about it, I thought if I was in my old job, there's no way I would have worked mm -hmm. 10 hours and not have it like know that I was working 10 hours, right? Like, <laughs> but it was so different now because, you know, I love so much of what I do that the time just went by so fast and it's it's just different. It feels so different when you're doing something that you really care about versus, you know, something that you don't, uh, which is that entrepreneur piece yeah. too, right? Like 
you get to and you have ownership that. of yeah. your work you know that everything you're doing is contributing towards your future and the future of those that you surround yourself with it's not just uh you know punching in numbers and stuff for some boss to go take mm-hmm. out another yacht at the end of the year mm-hmm. right right i, I yeah well, I just want to make sure we reflect on In Cup. That's a that's a Bill Dodson thing. Bill Dodson, guest of the show. Um, we love Bill, and I have not. Uh, I don't think we've talked about it in 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 the mm-hmm. form of the acronym. I remember when he was here, he talked about interest, novelty, challenge, urgency, passion. Like he uses those words, but I don't know that it had been adopted as an acronym. And it is so me. And judging by the the chat room, <laughs> it is also others. Uh, <laughs> and, and I think that's a really handy way to frame the terms that motivate us. So uh, that's super, super useful and appreciate you reframing that for us. Of course. I, it's one of my favorite I, things to talk about. Right. Oh, yeah. I, I want to talk yeah. about, um, though, uh, part of the reason we're here in addition to talking about entrepreneurship is community. Because when you, I, I think you ori- originally reached out, you and Melissa have been communicating and she had told us that you had said you were frustrated about the lack of resources made for adults with ADHD. And here you were, you were 20 when you got diagnosed and discovering that, uh, you know, there wasn't enough is, is what it sounds like. Can you talk about your experience of finding a community? And I should say, as someone uh, who, you know, is a part of a thriving and wonderful ADHD community specializing in adults, my heart was a little broken for you, man. Why did you find <laughs> us? <laughs> yeah. I wish I had. I wish I had. You're, you are welcome yes, to our anytime. community. Yes, anytime. Come on. <laughs> um, so at, at the time, it was a bit of a, when I see resources, I think I was mostly referring to sort of physical resources of like something that I can buy to assist me in an area of my yeah. life where I may have, I may face a struggle that is particular to ADHD or autism, anxiety, depression, etc. Some form of, you know, neurodivergence. I don't know how you feel about that term, but I use it as just sort of a nice, a nice umbrella uh, to encompass mm-hmm. everything. So I don't have to enumerate all of them every single time I speak about them. But uh, an example that came to mind right off the bat was fidget toys. I looked up like adult fidget toys, adult stem toys, and you know, I found some results for adult stem toys that I wasn't expecting, wasn't looking for. Uh, so we can don't search that. But yeah, I was going to say, I can only That's imagine yeah. where that goes. Yeah. But I yeah. was very quickly, yeah, everything was made of bright, rainbow, cheap looking plastic. And it very clearly was not actually made with adults in mind, even if it was one of those Amazon um, headers where, you know, it had like 70 terms in it to try to capture every single search possible. So, yeah, okay, this was a fidget spinner that cost three cents to make overseas. And yeah. when I was a kid, I had this set of magnets. And I can't say the brand, um, just for legal reasons, mm-hmm. but I had this set of magnets that I really thoroughly enjoyed. And this was well before I was diagnosed, but I carried them everywhere with me. Anyone that knew me in high school knew that I had my magnets that I kept in the coin pocket of my jeans. Hmm. And it's funny, if I look back at some pictures of me now, I can see them like peeking out the top of my little <laughs> jeans pocket. There's a picture of me like on Christmas, just casually holding them on opening up another gift or something. I looked for those one point. I'm like, is there any record that this is true? There is. But uh, <laughs> they weren't made for fidgeting. And I used them pretty, pretty vigorously, yeah. just all day, every day, using them in my hands. And I'm, I'm holding stim mags now. So I guess that wasn't the best thing to hold up to the camera for anyone watching. <laughs> but um, since they weren't made for that, they would fall apart pretty quickly when you actually use them as a fidget toy. They would, um, the ends would chip away, the magnets would fall out. And so the company stopped making them years ago because they were made as a kid's toy, of course. And um, kids would play with them, they'd fall apart, kids would eat the magnets. It was a terrible deal. All right. So, but I thought that if, you know, if this is so helpful to me, it stands to reason that it would be helpful to other people. Nothing like this exists now. Why doesn't something like this exist? Mm-hmm. And so I set out to try to make a, a, a a version of that initial toy that was better in every way, uh, stronger materials, stronger magnets, higher attention to detail on, you know, surface finish, uh, build quality, all of that, and try to make something that was actually designed to be not just physically stimu- stimulating, like say, you know, a fidget spinner, fidget cube, infinity cube, all those things, but also cognitively stimulating. It's pattern based. There aren't a lot of pattern based fidget toys. So I guess I'll, for anyone just listening, not watching, I'm holding up my stim mags right now and just sort of folding them in a different little routine on um, 
just in my hands. And that's something mm-hmm. I've been doing for this entire mm-hmm. podcast. I find that it helps bring me to a good stimulatory baseline. Um, for example, part of why ADHD people need to fidget or you know need to sway or pace while they're talking is just stimulation. Uh, and, and I won't jump too much into the science of it because I'm not qualified to talk about it, but a lot of it has to do with essentially dopamine deficiencies within your brain. And you s- try to self-stimulate through fidget toys, through swaying, pacing, uh, tapping your fingers, whatever it is you do to make up for that lack of uh, dopamine to self-stimulate. And so something that I think really sets StimEx apart is that aspect of cognitive stimulation. You're not just, you know, flicking your finger in one way over and over to spin something. And you can sort of adapt the amount of, I guess, stimulation that stim mags give you, depending on the situation. For example, you could just roll them between your fingers if you don't need much stimulation. If you need a little bit more, you can do a bit more of a complicated pattern in your hand. And I'm going off on a bit of a rant now. I don't remember what your initial question was. Well, the the initial question was about community and you're searching Mm -hmm. for community, but I actually want to focus on the the stim mags and just your general search for adult oriented uh, uh, fidget toys, because that is one of the things that I think has, has, uh, uh, has come up like all of the fidget toys that uh, that I have are either not designed as fidget toys. They're designed as like object, little objects of art, right? Like I have a, I have a little, you know, fancy um, it, it's I'm holding up. It's a wooden polished, uh, a piece of wood, but it was sold as something to a tchotchke to decorate a bookshelf. And for mm-hmm. me, I just like, there's a certain pattern I can get into where I'm rubbing it on my, on my hands. I also have a fidget spinner that again, was something that, that came as a result of my children and their ADHD. Yeah. not something that is like like I feel like there is a, a stigma around adult oriented fidgets like what is the message that the fidget will send if you are using it in a meeting or in a place where adults congregate mm-hmm. and I'm wondering if you've ever run into feedback like that like people are are hesitant to embrace fidgets no one in our community because <laughs> they celebrate fidgets all the yeah. live long day but I'm wondering if you've ever and we all we've have all got them them. yeah right so what <laughs> what's your what's your sense of that is there anything that's ever come up that's certainly been something that I have encountered, actually, when I was in seventh grade, I brought my magnets to school. And uh, I doubt this girl remembers if she does. I'm sorry, I forgive you. <laughs> but uh, I was just, you know, fiddling with it, like while I was working on my paper. And she said, Why are you doing that? That's so weird. And then just sort of like, looked away like it was, you know, it was like, you know, how cats look away all dramatic. Sometimes oh, yeah. it, was, mm-hmm. it was like one of those moments. And I was that, you yeah. know, I was a little insecure sixth seventh grader that that rocked me to my core i don't think i brought a fidget to school for the next three years yeah and then uh after that i I guess i got i guess i grew in self-confidence enough to bring a fidget to school after that but it um even thinking about it now it just sort of disturbs me that there are probably so many people even now um you know probably right this second somebody's being told that they shouldn't be fidgeting with something or that it's unbecoming or unprofessional Mm -hmm. etc but it's it's just a different way of it's just a, people's brains work in different ways. Some yeah, people yeah. need to use mm-hmm. fidget toys, stem toys, whatever you want to call them, in order to achieve peak focus. Some people mm-hmm. simply don't. And something that we're actually um, talking about within our company right now, and this may or may not be reflected on our website by the time this episode sort of goes live in early October, is rebranding from fidget toys to stem tools or fidget tools, oh, yeah. trying to show that this isn't something you just play with. This is something that is helpful to people. And that's something that our, our reviews have been uh, have been consistently stating as people saying, I, I've bought so many fidget toys for my son, or I've bought so many fidget toys for myself. None of them last longer than a week. None of them hold mm-hmm. my attention that long. These are the only ones that have been consistent enough in the level of stimulation they provide me for me to actually hold on to them and make them an everyday item. And it's it's funny you mentioned that you want to have one in every coat pocket because actually I was frantically looking around this morning for my favorite set. I have thousands of them in my apartment, but, <laughs> but I still have, have a set. favorite set. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where they are. They're somewhere, probably in a pocket. You know, you know what it gets me thinking? This is actually, I, you know, so I'm, I'm throwing back to when I was a kid and I would go to my dad's office and he had an office with a big desk and uh, he was he was rarely at it. But when he was, you know what he had on his desk? A Newton's cradle. 
You know, the mm-hmm. Newton's cradle with the five balls that kind of swing and back and yeah. forth. And I go, yeah. I would go around to other executive kind of the manager's offices and they all had something, whether it was the little bird that would go down on its thing. And they were always moving. And it only occurs to me right now that those were sensory tools, right? right? Those were the things that you get started, but they never called it that. It was just a desk accessory, right? It was just a decoration. But as soon as they pull that for, that ball back to get the Newton's cradle going, it became a fidget. And yeah. they were they were mm-hmm. grown adults who never in a million years would have said, oh, I need a I need a, a fidget. My my dad was lived his whole life without knowing that he had ADHD. Right. Everyone else really did. But he, uh, it, you know, it, it just strikes me that that might be the 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 wave of change. And I think I, I think rebranding around tools is the thing that might have helped guys like my dad understand how right. to reintegrate sort of his focus with his brain. It's actually funny you mentioned that sort of executive desk toy because that that actually defines our design philosophy pretty well of, I guess, not necessarily with the color releases. Those are just fun for people that actually want to, you know, enjoy a bright, vibrant color or a nice steamed color. But uh, we always try to have black available as a color on a website. Well, because um, black is the executive fidget toy. It's the executive fidget, but also <laughs> just designing things that people wouldn't feel embarrassed to have on their desk and have their 60 year old, 70 year old boss walk by and be like, back in my day, we didn't need any of that garbage, uh, but rather have something where he wants to pick it up and yeah. play with it or use it. That's it. Right? That's the thing is that I can totally see it being on your desk and then having somebody sit, you know, across from you and they pick it up and play with it as they're yeah. talking to you. Like that will happen, A lot of our reviews right? also and, just say like, I yeah. no longer have my stem eggs because members of my family have each taken four and now I don't have yeah. any. <laughs> That's it's fascinating. It's yeah, it's really fascinating. It is. Can you talk? I, I know we're we're so off topic, but hey, welcome I to think the that's ADHD perfect. Podcast. I don't believe in topics. Let me. I, I want to ask about <laughs> a little bit about the design philosophy because m- when I have seen other, will not name brands uh, here, they're either square or they're round, right? They're balls, and you put them together and they make a square. You were you have little columns. How did you land on columns? So we actually did a lot of testing around that. I got a 3D printer and sort of learned some rudimentary 3D modeling uh, to test different designs. And my roommates at the time, I was still in college, my roommates at the time can attest to the fact that that 3D printer was running for several months straight just with new prototypes. And then, you know, while I'd be printing, I decided I didn't like the look of this one. I'd go back and make another one. And columns were just, at the end of the day, made the most sense for what I wanted to create, which is that pattern-based fidget toy. I actually think I need to go back and update some of our marketing terms around being pattern-based. I've been talking about it, and I feel like that's something we should do more of. But besides the point, with columns or with with balls, there's only so much you can do because they don't really want to stick in a particular form or function. And with squares, it can be difficult to, you know, press on a certain point and have them move in a certain way because, you know, the surface area is the same across all of the points. But with uh, like a nice cylinder, it has two or four, I guess, well, there's a lot of different points of contact. Like it has a, a steel core, so you could just hang them off to the side of a different, mm-hmm. I, sorry, I'm, I'm doing things that people just listening won't be able to track. Look on our That's website. Okay. We have examples yeah, of how some eggs work. Yeah. But it gives you many more options. I, I'm not nearly egotistical enough to presume to know what our customers want. I like to give people as many options as they possibly can to like do different things with the toys that we create, or I guess tools, I guess I need, I need to get back into the habit of there we go. My, yeah, into the habit of saying tools, yes, tools, uh, people surprise me every single day with videos or pictures that they'll send of the patterns that they use their stem eggs for I saw somebody the other day that uses uh, four of them, they have two that they have between one of their fingers and they flick it around and it sort of like circles two of their fingers then comes back in. I have no idea how they do it, but it, it was bizarre. Oh, uh, and- uh, okay. So this is like the, the, this is like how they, how they actually manipulate the, yes, the thing. Yes, sorry. I don't, I don't think I, I probably That's- wasn't clear enough about that, but everyone uses them in a different yeah. way. Uh, the only people I know that I use them in patterns or in sets of nine are my brother and my dad, because that's how I sort of taught them how to use it. Everyone else thinks I'm crazy for that. But I think that it sort of goes to show that everybody 
has a different pattern that they fall into. And it creates a different kind of satisfaction where you feel like you've discovered something new and made something truly your own. Because with, say, I'm going to keep harping on fidget spinners. So sorry. I had a fidget spinner. Still have uh -huh. it. I, I loved it for many years. But it's so limited. All you can really do is spin it. Or if you want to do some tricks, you can do some tricks or whatever. But if someone sees you playing with a fidget spinner, they know exactly what you're doing. Like it is they a could pick signal. it up. It's a flag of ADHD. Thing. First of all, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's another one. Yeah. But second, yeah, you're right. It's it, it has a function. Like there aren't I, I, as many. Yeah, but with, with stem eggs, you sort of, you make the yeah. function your own. Um, it, it reminds me when I I lived in in Korea for a little while and I taught, and I, it's one of the things that I I was so fascinated by when I was teaching college students. <laughs> the the number and variety of patterns of using their pens as right. fidgets is extraordinary. It is it is a work of art. I've never seen I mastered one while I was there. And there were hundreds <laughs> of different kind of combinations of how to use the pen that they manipulate uh, all through, you know, elementary, high school and, and university. And this is what that reminds me of. And I don't think any of them would ever have said uh, uh, outwardly, you know, I, I have ADHD because it right. was, you know, largely not talked about, but they uh, absolutely talk about how it helps them stay centered and focused to have something to, to deal with. So ADHD or not, having something to manipulate is not a bad gig. Definitely. For the brand. And I feel like such a, a salesman right now, I apologize. I just get really excited talking yeah. about STEM mags. They're my, they're my baby. Um, but that, that is something we've heard from people as well is you can just extend them out in a line like a pen and then use them in the exact same way that you would fiddle with a pen. So it feels very familiar. They hold together yep. strong enough to do some of that stuff. Very strong magnets. I was just going to ask about Kickstarter. So how did that's a community coming together to support this. So how did how did that come? Yeah, about? so I'm not sure if this uh, I, I don't remember if I even really mentioned it that much in my sort of guest bio. But for well over a year, closer to two years before the Kickstarter, actually, I was creating content on social media surrounding ADHD, autism, anxiety, um, and just mental health in general. And I, I, I like to think that I formed a pretty strong community there, a place where people felt like their concerns could be heard and understood and people weren't downplayed, etc. I tried to really try to really monitor the comments to make sure that it was a positive space for people to be. And yeah. uh, through doing that, I that, that was also when I was sort of designing and building STEM mags. And so I, along the way, sort of checked in with people like, hey, does this look like something you would want? Mm -hmm. And so uh, one of the... Good business. I, I tried, I tried. <laughs> um, <laughs> and that was something that I was very self-conscious about for a long time as well, is feeling like I was taking advantage of people by asking for their feedback. I'm like, oh, I'm just this, I, I feel like I'm just this businessman trying to, it's like, no, that's, that's the RSD. So yeah. yeah. That's, that's the RSD yeah, talking. It's so authentic. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause you want something for them. And the only way, you know, if it's going to work for them is if you talk exactly. to people who would be using yeah. it. Yeah. Absolutely. And then uh, through that, I also built a, a nice community of other uh, ADHD and mental health creators who I, a lot of them I still mm -hmm. chat with to this day. It's one of my best friends I actually met through that. Her name is Haley Honeyman. She, she's wonderful. And she's actually our, our community manager now for STEMX. Um, so I posted on my social media about the Kickstarter. And then I also sent out samples of STEMX to a lot of those other creators that I'd become friends with. And, uh, you know, I, I, a lot of them, I couldn't afford their usual rates because they they work with, you know, larger companies that have these massive budgets. All of STEMX was just self-funded. I, uh, as I, we mentioned earlier, I filed for my first LLC at 15. That was a video production company. I did that from when I was 15 until sort of right up to when STEM Ags started. And I saved up a good chunk of change, at least for my age during that time frame. And that's the money that went into funding STEM Ags. I guess I also won a competition, an entrepreneurship competition through my school, my senior year. That was a really nice boost in funds. But uh, wow. I, anyways, <laughs> back, back, to, back to the main story. I couldn't afford to pay all of these wonderful creators their full rates, but they were generous enough to uh, post for me anyways. And I sent them the scraps that I could. Um, I like to think that it's because they believed in my mission. They knew that I was being authentic with it. I wasn't trying to take advantage of 
the ADHD community, I was trying to actually do something for the ADHD community, which I, I see a lot of brands and companies say like, oh, this is the perfect thing for your ADHD. And then I look at it and I can just immediately tell like this was not made with ADHD needs in mind. This was made to turn a profit at the expense of ADHD people. And my uh, philosophy is the, the antithesis of that, if I'm using that word correctly. Um, every, mm -hmm. Everything that we make, and I guess, can, can I show off the, the product that we're launching in a couple of days, actually? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. This, this is yeah. the first, the first <laughs> public course. disclosure. Um, let's see. It is a sort of like handheld mechanical keyboard <gasps> digit toy. Oh, and that looks like I fun. tried to keep that same <laughs> sort of philosophy of like, I don't know what people want. And so like, there's, there's so many different ways you can hold it. And every time I give it to someone new, they have a different little pattern that they do with it that I, of course, never thought of. But if I just, whoops, a key fell out. Yeah. This is 3D printed. So don't don't judge yeah. me for that. Yeah. Um, yeah, right. The, the, the final version is that not 3D is so printed. Cool. That's, I'm just waiting I, for a sample. I'm from the just factory. saying this. I, yeah. I, I'm holding up what I use to type on, right? This is my keyboard. It's a giant steel mechanical keyboard. And what you just gave me is a fidget with four keys that are, look to be as if they are off of my steel mechanical keyboard yeah. to play with. Just like it looks like for those who are listening, um, they uh it looks like a uh strength a, a grip strengthener tool like a spring yeah. thing right, but you hold it and right. under each mm -hmm. finger is one of these big keys to i oh my god um we actually we went and made some custom keys as well so like if you weren't satisfied with the amount of press or the amount yeah. of press you Switches. can get in uh yeah yeah exactly yeah. sorry i didn't say the term because not everyone's familiar with it i go off on these tangents yeah. about these complex mechanical keyboard things. And everyone around me is like, what are you talking about? Uh, but like, here's one that's like an extra clicky, extra <gasps> pressure uh, blue one. There's so one that's satisfying. just like a quieter, extra pressure one. Yeah. Really satisfying. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, wow. Uh, uh, anyways, that's great. That's, that kickstarter so you're adding, in about a week. I mean, this is, yeah, you're just adding new things as you move yeah. along. Uh, uh, that's well, really and that cool. gets to the next question that I wanted to ask you, which was how with being such a, a streamlined organization, right? Just a couple of you. How do you handle all of the everything that you're doing, right? Like the including support, like I'm reading your responses to customer reviews on your website. How do you handle that? Plus, ideating on on new things and bringing them to market because i feel like that's one of the things that that is a huge challenge is i have lots of ideas if i'm sitting here listening to this conversation i have lots of ideas but but i, I don't know how i i need the skills and the and the tools to focus them into reality and it sounds like that's what you've you've done quite you've ably done. I, i'm glad that it seems that way on the surface <laughs> <laughs> um, I like to think of myself as a professional generalist. I like to have a, a moderate amount of skill in sort of every aspect of the business development process. So as I mentioned earlier, I learned 3D modeling to make the initial prototypes of Stimax, but the final design, I took my initial model and gave it to someone who specialized in DFM, that's design for manufacturing. And they actually made it sort of, you know, something that could be yeah. manufactured rather than just, you know, say 3D printed. Mm -hmm. So I like mm -hmm. to bring things as much as I can. I like to bring things maybe 60, 70% of the way and then hire a specialist to bring it that last, you know, 40, 30, 40%, whatever, whatever percentages I said before, I don't really recall. I lost my train of thought. I would say it's, it's almost against my ADHD nature, but systemizing things as much as I possibly can and actually sticking to those systems, not just making a new one every couple of weeks. So uh, definitely a key instrument to the success of Stimmax. And we actually, we just rebranded to Stimara, um, keeping that sort of Stim prefix as yeah. like, you know, homage to our roots. But Ara loosely translates to sanctuary in Latin, which is sort of what we're aiming to be for our community and for the neurodivergent community as a whole, a place where people can come and feel confident that what they're buying was made with their specific needs in mind. Um, and with sort of quality above above all else. But a key instrument to our success has definitely been uh, our director of operations, Karis McCloskey, shout out, she's awesome. But um, she has a very different brain than I do, still ADHD, but I, I can only worry about things 
when they're right in front of me. I didn't really start working on the Kickstarter that's coming out in a week too much until probably about a week ago. I had so many months to do all of these things that I'm now doing now. I didn't have to work 12 hours yesterday, but that's how my brain works. I need mm -hmm. that deadline to do my best work. I can do work before then, but I know it's not going to be my best until it's urgent. She works the opposite way. She's great at planning things out, say three months in advance. And so we're in a constant battle of her wanting to plan things super early, me wanting to plan things super late. It usually lands in a nice middle ground of planning things at mm -hmm. a reasonable length of time. And so through systemizing things like that, we are able to tackle a lot of projects simultaneously through, uh, through sprints. I think it's called sort of lean or agile development. Mm -hmm. it, uh, I, I don't recall. I had classes on that in college, but... I, I was not a very good student. I had a, actually, it's funny, one of my entrepreneurship professors <laughs> told me, because that was that was one of my majors in college, uh, he told me that I was one of his worst students, but one of his best entrepreneurs. And so I, I wear that as a, as a badge yeah. of honor. That's a <laughs> yeah, compliment, right. yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm taking that. But uh, I tried breaking things down by day for a while of, oh, this is my day for manufacturing. This is my day for working on this or that, but it, I, I just couldn't really stick to it. I know it's ironic. I just said that I stick to structures. I've been better about sticking to, I, I we manage everything through Asana, which is a project management or task mm -hmm. management software. We also have Slack channels. We try to keep our Asana projects and our Slack channels named the same thing so we can keep files organized. But a, a big part of it has just been letting go of control and being willing to admit that I'm not the only person that can do this task, even though so far, I am the only person that has done this task. And just uh, being willing to pass that off to somebody else on my team. Um, and essentially trust that they're going to do it, not necessarily in the same way that I would, but to the same level of quality. And um, yeah, I, I wish wow. I could answer your question better. I don't really know how we do it. It just things just I, sort I, of work out in the do. end. Yeah. I think you, I think you did, and I think it's it's uh, it's you have such a true entrepreneur spirit, and I love that. And I love that you've supported yourself around the right people. And I think that that's what really matters is that you've got somebody else that you know you're partnering with that is that balance, you know, <clears throat> and and. I also think it's really smart to know, you know, how far can you go with this idea and the development of it? And then when do you turn it over to a yeah. professional? Because I think that so many entrepreneurs try to do it themselves and then they fail or they get so frustrated, they give up. And, you know, when I talk to new coaches about business and building their business, I always say you have to think of it as a business. It's not just mm -hmm. coaching. It's also a business. And you have to look at, you know, what what can only you do and what can other people do and not be afraid to invest in that because that's what's going to get you farther. Um, and no, I, I absolutely love what well, you do. You. And if there's anything we can do to back, you know, back you up, I, I love it. I We will definitely make sure that we've got all of the... Uh, website information and everything that people can can go see what you do i i just love the authenticity and like where you're coming your intention it shines oh, Cody. thank you it so really much shines. i get so self-conscious about it like i said it's that rsd if people are just going to see me as some some businessman out to to make stuff to sell but especially because I, I i struggle with with tone i tend to sort of default into that sort of business almost robotic tone of talking about things i just get excited about them and i forget to uh, put things in, in nuances that might help whoever I'm talking to under, better understand what it is that I'm uh, doing. I also, on, on the topic of support really quick, I want to give a massive shout out to my girlfriend. I would not be able to do any of this without her. Uh, I would certainly be far skinnier than I am. Just, uh, <laughs> it's... She makes sure you eat during those 12 does. hours, she right? Does. <laughs> um, and it's... It's it's honestly it's a different kind of of ADHD medication where I guess sorry now we're now we're going to, to relationship stuff but I I do think it's an interesting topic of uh, she makes up for all of the areas that I sort of have shortcomings in whether it be from my ADHD or just you know my my personality I tend to let things pile up mm -hmm. and so she'll give me a nice reminder of like oh this is looking a little cluttered do you want to work on it together really quick I'm like yes I would have left that for oh. another three months. 
Uh, same thing with food of like, oh, it's it's lunchtime. I, you haven't eaten yet. Would you like something? And I was like, oh, that's that's awesome. And then we'll go out and just sort of make it together in the kitchen. But um, just mm-hmm. lovely. I know it's, yeah. it's a night and day mm-hmm. difference between sort of when like before I was with her and now after we've been together for several years now. But she's she's lovely. Well, mm-hmm. this uh, whole thing is lovely. I have two <laughs> questions you. about the product. Uh, of one is so I I, I jump all the way to the bottom of the the bottom rung of people because everybody really likes the thing. So I look at the low reviews because there aren't very Good. many of them. And I want to know what people are complaining about. It sounds like the mail is really troublesome for you guys. So Man. many of the things are, are people don't just don't get it. I don't, you know, obviously totally out of your control. But one of the things that people say is either the photos make these things look too large. And I'm, I, can't figure that out because but then i went back after reading all those looking at the product page and i can kind of see they look like dumbbells but then why would you order them if they're that big but second is they're too small so obviously you can't help everybody at all but you You say in one of your comments sorry they don't fit you we're considering making larger versions of these things and i would like to know how far along the process those are uh, you know, funny you mentioned that. I the prototype, the, the first sample is actually being made today, uh, September fifteenth. <laughs> it's it's taken something I've really learned throughout Great this process thing. is that everything takes longer than you want or expect. We started working on yeah. a carrying case for stem mags, and I want to say late February, early March. I thought it would take maybe two months, three months, start to finish. Yeah. Um, and it, I guess maybe it could have if I was focusing 100% of my time on it, but that's just not realistic. I have so many other things to attend to on a daily basis that unfortunately yeah. are more critical than sort of bringing out this new thing. So finally, just yesterday, I received the first samples in the mail of the case, the carrying case. So hopefully by the time this podcast is out, they'll be available. If not, well, they'll be available soon. With the reviews of people saying that they thought they were going to be bigger, we didn't used to have any product photos mm-hmm. on the website. It was just renders. Uh, we had two consecutive terrible experiences with product photographers where they essentially took our product, took the deposit, and then just completely ghosted us, like two in a row. Oh, it was dear. awful. Oh, that's um, awful. So, that, yeah, that... Well, the photos look get, great on the website. And about I, it. <laughs> I think you have enough, yeah, like yeah, one of the things too. that is on there that I think you can, you, you cannot argue. You have videos of these things in yeah, people's very hands. True. Like there is no way you can, I, I feel like you can miss the sense of scale on these things because you see them in a hand. They are lovely. They are sweet. And uh, again, stocking stuffers for everyone, including uh, this mm-hmm. guy right here. I'm really, <laughs> well, really excited. Send me your I'd love to send you, send you a oh. whole bunch of them. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Oh, uh, you just made his day. I I regret to inform you, you will receive it post haste. Thank you so much, Cody. You're great. I had no idea what we were going to get into in this conversation. I'm so surprised. It's fantastic. (laughs) Thank you. Of course. Yeah. I mean, if there's ever anything else you want to talk about, feel free to to send me another email. I love doing these. I feel much much more comfortable now than I did in the beginning. It it had the pre-podcast jitters have been a while. All it took was 45 minutes. Right. We're doing I guess right. so. Yeah. Oh, uh, one last thing is we also have our uh, sensory-friendly shirts releasing very soon. Maybe by the time this podcast oh, is out. Wow. So of course they're tagless. Of course they're made with the nicest material you yes. could possibly imagine. Maybe not possibly imagine. That, sounds, that might get out of hand. But nicest material you could realistically imagine. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> awesome. You've got, you got some good really stuff. great things right. coming up. That's Demara, awesome. Uh, yeah, we are over leveraged in R&D for sure, but <laughs> <laughs> it's leading to exciting yeah. things. <laughs> exactly. That's right. Well, That's right. thank you, everybody, for hanging out and meeting Cody and listening to this show. We show, so appreciate you, uh, 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 your time, your attention, uh, your presence in the live stream chat room if you're members of our community. Don't forget, if you do have something to contribute to the conversation, we're heading over to the Show Talk channel in our Discord server, and you can join us right there by becoming a supporting member at the deluxe level or better. On behalf of Cody Lukens and Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright. We'll see you back here next week on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. 